I'm still recovering from it. It's such a horrendous movie. I mean, you know, just when you thought these pathetic, wimpish snowflakes couldn't get any worse. It's just unbelievable. Now, it's just incredible. Now they are campaigning to pull movies like Kindergarten Carton Cop, a completely inoffensive, funny-ish film with, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger playing a huge cop who has to take over a kindergarten class. But the, the argument they make is that it, it promotes policing in schools and at a time when we're all <laughs> supposed to be very sensitive about um, white police forces harassing kids, apparently that's a terrible moment at which to show kindergarten cop. These people live on another planet entirely. It's such an insane example of cancel culture. And you do sometimes wonder, are they ever going to come to their senses about this stuff? Uh, well, I think the answer is no. I mean, you and I, uh, we keep coming on the radio to moan about this rubbish <laughs> and nobody seems to listen to us. But I think we're making headway uh, on this story. What it is, is a, a local author from Portland, Oregon, which, of course, right now is Black Lives Matter Demonstration Central. It's all going on up there. A local author called Lois Levine says there's nothing. Enter I'll do an American accent. There is nothing entertaining about the presence of police in schools which feeds the school-to-prison pipeline. Uh, <laughs> and apparently uh, that is how pop culture... She goes on to say, we recognise that films like this are not good family fun, uh, but rather relics of how pop culture feeds into racist assumptions. How, what, an, uh, how is, it, what is the racist assu assumption of a cop <laughs> going undercover to teach some kids? There, there are no racist assumptions at all. I mean, they completely are making it up. But it's actually a very good example of what's driving these lunatics, which is they have this vision of ordinary people as a bunch of saps who can't possibly sit through a funny film or Gone with the Wind because it has old fashioned depictions of um, the slave era or, um, you know, The Mighty Boosh, which was pulled for a while because it had a blackface character, or, you know, the infamous Hitler Germany episode of Faulty Towers. They think that we're such idiots, we're so brain dead, that if we watch these things, we'll just be overcome with the racist instincts, we'll be overcome with hatred for certain sections of society, and we'll all go completely crazy. Because the big secret to censorship, of course, it's always driven by contempt for the audience, contempt for ordinary people. And this snooty belief that, you know, we clever people with PhDs uh, who understand pop culture and all the ins and outs of pop culture, we have a responsibility to cover people's eyes and cover people's ears. So it is funny. It's it's also depressingly paternalistic, and I think far more people should be angry about it. This is what's depressing as well, Brendan, is Lois Levine, uh, the author of this tweet about <laughs> the school to present prison pipeline, which feeds <laughs> into racist pop culture. I had no idea what she's talking about. So she tweets this nonsense. Uh, so she's not responsible for the pulling of this film. The people who are running the film mm -hmm. festival saw the tweet and immediately pulled it. It's the way people respond to this nonsense that's at the heart of the problem, isn't it? That's exactly right. Because, you know, there's always been cranky people. There have always been green ink people who would write letters and say, you know, take this filth off TV or <laughs> cancel this play or, or refuse to publish this book. But in the past, you know, most institutions would stand up against that and say, no, we're going to carry on doing what we're doing. What we have now are institutions just falling down at the feet of these nutty, woke censors and doing what they tell them to do. You know, pulling things from Netflix, pulling things from BBC iPlayer, um, erasing Gone with the Wind and now Kindergarten Cop. They, they keep caving in to this noisy mob and of course that just emboldens the mob because it's like throwing red meat at them that's good it's going to drive them even more crazy and want them to censor more things so it's the worst thing you can do is give in to these people well this woman uh, levine the local author uh, who is responsible for all this uh, who went through her se painfully circuitous route to find racism in <laughs> kindergarten cop she <laughs> <laughs> she, honestly, she emailed I mean it, it, you'd cry if you didn't laugh though, mm. because it, it is actually quite serious because this is happening all over the world and it's insane so she emailed the Willamette Week uh, that well known publication of record uh, to also uh, say that kinder, she compared Kindergarten Cop to the pro-KKK classic The Birth of a Nation yeah 
Yeah, I mean, that is a classic example of what we're talking about here, because what she said to uh, the local newspaper, she said, um, everyone is saying kindergarten cop is just a movie. Well, Birth of a Nation was just a movie, too. And so she's explicitly comparing uh, an Arnold Schwarzenegger ridiculous comedy from 1990 <laughs> with a pro KKK film from the early 20th century. This is how insane these people have gone. I mean, the point I would make, the broader point I would make is actually Birth of a Nation is just a movie too. And we should be able to watch that as well. I think people are sensible enough to be able to watch even genuinely controversial films and make up their minds for themselves about whether it's interesting or not. But, you know, the, the thing that's... Uh, it's not surprising that this has happened in, in Portland, Oregon, by the way. Well, right, Portland exactly. Portland is yeah. the capital of self-hating white liberals. You know, that's why, <laughs> that's why Black Lives <laughs> Matter is actually so big in Portland. Yeah, did you see all the uh, demonstrators in uh, uh, Portland? Uh, the Black Lives Matter demonstrators, very, very few of them were black. Yes, most of absolutely. Them were, most of them were white housewives. Absolutely. And actually, that tells us a bigger story about why Black Lives Matter took off in the way that it did. I think a lot of it is driven by actually self-hating white liberals who just love the thrill of saying how disgusting their race is and indulging in all this white guilt. And we're sorry they, we're so awful. We're sorry for being white and we're sorry our ancestors did, did something 300 years ago. I mean, these people are nuts. So it's not surprising that it's happened there. But as you just said, it's happening in a lot of places now. It's growing and growing, this problem. And I think we do have to laugh at it. That's one very useful thing, make fun of these people. But we also do have to develop a bit of a backbone and say to them, no, we're not pulling this film. We're not banning that speaker from campus. We're not going to burn that book. We're actually going to stick by our principles and allow everyone to speak. There are laws uh, in this country and indeed America to protect freedom of speech. Uh, mm -hmm. On a wider scale, the reason this nonsense takes off in this country and probably America as well, but especially here, uh, is that the universities, uh, the authorities at the universities decide, for, for whatever reason, not to enforce the law of the land when it comes to freedom of speech. Uh, so when these snowflake students say, oh, someone's coming to make a speech with whom we don't agree, uh, and they demand their safe space is respected and these people are no platforms, it's actually against the law. But the university authorities do nothing about it. They've got to start taking taking a stand, haven't they? The universities have become incredibly cowardly, and that's the truth of the matter. And I've experienced this myself. You know, five years ago, I was due to speak at Oxford University, Christchurch College, a very prestigious college, and a bunch of students threatened to turn up and disrupt the event. And so the university caved into the students and, and cancelled the event. They censored the event. And that's happened to numerous people in recent years. And, and you think to yourself, if you can't have a free open debate in Oxford, you know, the oldest, most prestigious university on earth, if you can't have open discussions in citadels of knowledge where the whole point is intellectual experimentation and, and risky thinking and, and being open and provocative and in, intellectual, if you can't talk about things there, where can you do it? So I think if universities and schools increasingly are caving into censorship and increasingly pushing the kind of woke, correct way of thinking, then I think there's actually little hope for society more broadly. We really do have to start holding the line on the most important liberty in, in society, which is the liberty to speak, freedom of speech.